Hey, I would like to show you my new free BBC Microbit app. You only need a regular Microbit board and a computer with Bluetooth or a mobile device to introduce your students into the Microbit world with this interactive multimedia presentation. I hope you'll like it and find it useful. To start working with this app, the only thing you need is the BBC Microbit board. Uh, mine has an adapter attached to it, but it's not necessary. We only need a regular Microbit board version 1 or version 2 and a computer or a mobile device with Bluetooth connection. The first thing you have to do before starting working with the app is to upload specific Microbit code to the board. You can find it on our website. The link is in the description. So I opened the app in the browser. It's online at microbit-intro.web.app and I click the robot head icon in the upper right corner and then you see the dialog pop-ups. Uh, the Microbit web app wants to pair with your devices and your Microbit should be available here on the list. If you have more Microbits turned on, uh, more of them would appear here and you have to know each Microbit specific name. It's this one. Mine is called Vivas. And this name is specific to each Microbit board. Each Microbit board has its own name. We cannot change it. So uh, it's a good practice to write it down somewhere. And then uh, we know that this one is called Vivas and I can easily find it on the list when there are more Microbit boards available to connect over Bluetooth. So I click pair and you see that the robot icon uh, has this uh, white outline now and I can open the inputs monitor here with the, the second icon below and if the sliders move when I operate with the board you see that the application receives the data from the board everything is okay if for whatever reason the application will stop work first thing you check if the outline from the robot icon uh, disappeared. Like right now I turned off the board and you see that the app instantly disconnected. So I have to reconnect again. Click the icon per and I'm ready to go. So whenever your students tell you that their app stopped working, the first thing you check if it is properly connected. When we are properly connected, we can start the presentation. Each student has its own board. Each one is connected to their computer and we can um, go on with the slides. Each slide represents uh, another microbit special feature. Like for example, on slide number two, we can test the microbit LED display. The microbit has built in, we, I wouldn't call it a screen, it's a display with uh, five rows and five columns of uh, red LEDs, 25 pixels in total. And in nowadays standards, it is ridiculously small number of pixels. Like each 1080p or a 4K screen, even on, on your smartphone has uh, millions of uh, pixels. This one has only 25. But with only such a small number of pixels, it's already uh, good enough to perform some crucial functions for our electronic gadgets. We can, for example, display some text or a number on the screen. When I will write the text here in this text field, hello, and click enter, you see that the text is being displayed on the microbit screen. I can write uh, the text, I can write any number, I can write my name here, Maciej, or your name, or your, each of your students' names, and test how to display text on the screen. I, we can also display some animation. When I click the show animation button, you see that this uh, cross starts to rotate on the microbit screen. This animation is pre-programmed, we cannot change it here, but when we will start coding the microbit board, we can program it to display any animation we would like. And the last thing we can do is to display some kind of pictures on the microbit screen. We can draw them pixel by pixel. That's the advantage of working with small number of pixels, that we can draw pixel by pixel. It wouldn't be possible on full HD screen. So, small, very primitive, yet extremely useful screen on the BBC Microbit board. 
it's always good to have some kind of a visual actuator on your robot. So the first thing we can test is the microbit LED screen. We go to the slide number three and here we can talk a bit about buttons. Buttons are the most basic electronic sensors. We simply press the button and it detects if it was pressed or released. The microbit has two buttons built in and these buttons, what's the most important thing about them is that they do not have any specific functions uh, connected with them. They only detect if they are pressed and we only decide what the button will do by coding the board. So this slide is a nice opportunity to discuss where in real life we can find similar buttons, in which devices, in which electronic gadgets, like for example in keyboards, in remote controls, and what is the most common use case of a button? It is usually turning things on and off. So in this slide you can see that there are these interactive options in the bottom. We can turn on devices with the button. I click turning devices and you see that the lamp appeared on the screen and I can turn it on and off with the micro bit button. So I could connect my buttons to any other device and control it that way. Another option, a doorbell. We can connect the button to a doorbell and it plays this ringing sound. Where else we could find uh, some buttons? In games controllers. So let's try this third option, controlling a robot. And now you see that I launched a uh, game uh, and I can control this robot head by pressing A and B buttons and my goal is to catch this Woo. Uh, small robot heads falling from the top of the screen. Okay so here our presentation will usually stop for about like five minutes for uh, for students to express their uh, excitement about the game and trying to get some nice score. And the most important part that we did here was to talk about um, the fact that, look, we have these two buttons built into the board, but I didn't change anything in the board. I didn't change anything in the hardware. And my button was at first turning the lamp on and off. Then it became a doorbell and uh, then it became a game controller. So it is my decision what the button will do. It's not pre-programmed. It doesn't have any specific functions. It, it is me as a designer, as a constructor uh, who designs these electronic gadgets with BBC Microbit boards, who decides uh, what the button will do. It's only up to our imaginations what we will use it for. And we do it with coding, with programming. So that's why coding is important, because it allows us to create things. Okay, let's go on. Slide number four. And here we have an accelerometer. Accelerometer, which is a sensor that detects the movement of our board. You see, when I rotate the board, uh, the uh, graphical representation of the board on the screen rotates as well. So I can detect its uh, movement in the X and Y axis. An accelerometer is also a very useful sensor. Again, it's a nice opportunity to try to discuss where in real life we could find such a sensor. In what device that most of us use every day, usually even for plenty of hours a day, where can we find an accelerometer? And yes, you guessed it, it is our smartphone. And what we would use it on the smartphone? The most basic function is to detect if the screen of the smartphone is vertical or horizontal. So we could rotate the content on the screen as well. We could also control some games on the smartphone with, the, with this sensor. So the most basic common usage of an accelerometer is in our uh, mobile phones. Another possible usage would be to detect the correct position of some kind of object, for, like for example in some kind of uh, construction work where, where we need to measure angles, we could also use an accelerometer to detect the position 
of some objects. And the last thing we could try is to detect the movement. Accelerometer or a gyroscope can we be found in a, in a smartwatch or in a smart band that could measure our, uh, our steps, our movement, our physical activity. So here, for example, I can detect jumps of the microbit board and control this robot with it. And that's it for the accelerometer. Uh, this slide is also a nice opportunity to discuss what is this sensor for, what are the possibilities that it gives us, and what can we build with it. Let's go further, slide number five, and it is a compass. And at first, when you, uh, when you upload the co code to the board, uh, the compass won't work because we have to calibrate it. Look, when I will click this button, calibrate compass, it will start this activity on the microbit board. Uh, the it will display the text tilt to fill screen. And it starts this kind of a little game where I have to paint the, the whole screen by rotating it. The goal of this activity is to move the board for a while. And then the compass should start to work. And you see that it is able now to detect the correct position and angle of our board in uh, relation to the physical, geographical directions of our world. So we could use the, the, um, th this sensor. This sensor is called, in fact, not a compass, but a magnetometer, and in, it can detect changes in magnetic fields. So if the field is static, it can detect the magnetic field of the, of the Earth, but also we could use it to detect it any other changes in magnetic fields. So we could detect magnets with it. So it might be useful to perform some kind of non-contact presence detection. Let's go on, slide number six. And this one is thermometer. Thermometer is also built into the board. It's not the most exciting sensor of them all. Uh, it works really slow as the heat dissipation in the board is quite slow. The thermometer is built into the main processor of the board. It's on the back, uh, but if I will put my finger like somewhere over here, you see that the temperature on the screen changes slightly. So we could use the microbit board to bu build some kind of a weather station or maybe some electronic gadget that could take care of our plants in some way. It's only up to you as the inventor, as the designer that uses this sensor as a tool. Slide number seven and the last part of our board, of, of, of the features of our microbit board are the digital pins that are on the bottom of the board. There are three pins, uh, three main pins, zero at one and two, and uh, plus and minus connectors on the board. So f when I touch the plus three volt connector with one finger and the zero pin with the other finger, you see that the board detects the connection. When I touch the two, it detects here. Um, so I could use it uh, in the most basic scenarios as some kind of an additional buttons, some kind of additional touch sensors. But these pins could be also used uh, as inputs, but also as outputs. So we can connect some other electronic devices to the microbit board, thanks to these pins. And this whole area here is called the, the edge connector. It has more of these pins here in line and it is crucial when we want to build uh, something with the microbit board some kind of a robot some kind of an, uh, an electronic device we have to connect it to the board uh, so the board can communicate with other electronic components and uh, this is why we need these pins it's a really important and really useful feature of the board Let's go further, the last slide, number eight. We get to know the basic microbit functions and here we have a quiz where we can test our knowledge with three simple questions. Uh, what can the built-in LED display on the BBC microbit board not do? What it is incapable of? 
and the uh, options are display animation and we already saw that it can display animation it can display numbers but can it shine the LED blue? No, it cannot. The, the built-in LEDs can only shine in red. Uh, they cannot change the color, so, so this option is correct. Which sensor is responsible for rotating the screen in a smartphone or a tablet? And here we have accelerometer, potentiometer and a button. Buttons don't have anything to do with movement. Potentiometer, it's not built into the micro bit board. We haven't been using it. And the sensor that was detecting the movement was accelerometer. Okay, and the third question, uh, which sensor do we have to use as a compass accelerometer? Uh, accelerometer was the one for the movement. So now magnetometer and thermometer. Thermometer is for the temperature. So the one for the compass is magnetometer as compass uses magnetic fields. When we solved the quiz, it was really simple just to get some engagements in the end. We can play as a reward this asteroids game. I can control this ship with the direction of the of the board with the I can control it with the compass and with button A I give my spaceship some thrust so we can move forward and with button B I can shoot to destroy this asteroid blocks so they will not kill me. So also really uh, simple and and funny uh, activity with the micro bit board. So it took me something like 10 minutes to showcase this lesson to you. Usually in the class scenario it takes about half an hour with all the discussions that you can make uh, around the subject and I hope you and your students will enjoy using this app.